to Resilience by Faith podcast, okay? We are here for another grand episode. I'm super excited, but not really to talk about this topic today. Um, I, uh, never mind, I'm just going to go straight into it. So trauma, trauma lessons, okay? Guys, y'all know my story for those of you who don't. Um, I endured physical, sexual, verbal abuse growing up, and that took a toll on me. And so, um, as rightfully so, I am in therapy, and I'm working through some not-so-pleasant things and memories, okay? So I wanted to share some trauma lessons with you guys for anybody out there, Mm -hmm. any of my listeners who have been through some sort of trauma, um unpleasantry. I know life is life in right now. And sometimes you never know when things may show up. So I wanted to give you a few key points to keep in mind this week. Um, Something to think about, you know, food for thought. Um, And hopefully this will be of some help to you. If you may not be the person that endured some type of trauma, Maybe it's a friend, maybe it's um, a cousin, a colleague, co-worker, um, a schoolmate, somebody. Please share this episode with them because this may really be helpful in changing their perspective on their trauma and how they look at it, but more more importantly, how they think about it, you know? Um, So part of understanding yourself is understanding where you came from. So understanding your childhood, understanding how you grew up, the things you saw, the things you've experienced, um, and how it affects you. Meaning, you know how people say, oh, you starting to sound just like your mom. Oh, you sound just like so-and-so. That's what I'm talking about. Like the habits that we pick up. Um, that that may be like subconscious, unintentional, you just do because you've seen it so much because you heard it so much, that's your response or because you've seen it so much or you heard it so much, that's what you do. Um, and so I wanted to talk about this today because as I've been working with my psychologist, my therapist, it has been more apparent to me that as a child, I have absorbed a whole lot more a whole lot more than just what my parent told me to focus on. And I have absorbed a whole lot more than just, you know, what they wanted me to see. I saw everything. When y'all think your children are not paying attention, they really are. They're paying attention. They're listening. um, And they are soaking it up like a sponge. So please, if you have children, be careful. Be careful about what you do and say. But anyway, let's jump right into the points, the pearls of wisdom, so to speak, that I wanted to give today. Um, Number one would be the most important thing to do would be forgive. Forgive, but the most important thing after forgiveness is self-awareness. We are never aware of how much our trauma shows up in different ways. Um, what you have learned from your trauma and how close of a friend, let me reiterate, how close of a friend trauma really is. Um, So the number one thing I did was I had to figure out how I could be set free and more importantly, how I could move forward in my current life, like in the present Um, Because we know trauma is in the past and we try not to live there. But every now and then you cannot help the fact that trauma just shows up. Even when you're not in flight or fight, even when you're not thinking about it, you make decisions based on your trauma and what you've seen and what you've heard and what you've experienced. And so the number one thing I had to figure out is how can I move forward with my life? And number one, not live in the past, like I just said, but like literally be freed, literally not to let trauma become me, me become trauma. And the first thing I did was I had to find a psychologist to help me be more self-aware. And I had to go through a couple to get to the one that matches with my personality and the one that 
you know, clicked with me the best because everybody don't know this or don't utilize this. And they think that they're going to hurt their psychologist or their counselor's feelings. But honestly, they could care less. Um, if if the relationship isn't working out, you could have enough decency to go and tell them, hey, you know, I've been seeing you for a little bit. I've been seeing you for a couple of sessions. This isn't working and go get you another one. But honestly, you don't even have to do that. It is the patient right for you to see anybody you want to. So you can honestly go to anybody you want to. Um, so when something isn't working, just don't come back. I mean, they have so many other patients. I doubt that they'll be thinking about just you. But for um, whatever reason, a lot of people think that, that the whoever the provider is, they're going to be like, oh, they didn't come back or, you know, put them in some type of limbo because they're like, it's too uncomfortable for them to say, hey, this isn't working out. But you do have the right to go to another provider. But like I said, I went to quite a few until I found my person. And once we started working on each other, we didn't jump right in. Of course, you got to get to know each other. You got to tread lightly as a psychologist, as a counselor. You know, you never know how you're going to trigger somebody or you just want to make sure how they're presenting is really how it is before you dig in. And I'm not a counselor or a psychologist. I'm a PA, but it only makes sense that you don't want to jump right in because you don't know them like that. And they don't know you like that. And you don't want um, the therapeutic alliance to be broken. So, um, especially in the very beginning, or they felt like you said something to certain, you know, there's a lot of ways things can be misinterpreted, but yeah. So anyway, aside from finding a psychologist, um, I wanted to wait. Well, before I get into that, I have to tell you guys how you can also find a psychologist and or a therapist in your area. There is a website called Psychology Today. You can literally go on that website, type in your zip code. You can filter by gender, race, um, belief system, the type of therapy they do, the type of ages or the, um, the ages that they see. Uh, and the people that they work with. So you can definitely go to psychologytoday.com, okay? Aside from getting a psychologist to help me, I decided to start reading more. I decided to pick up this awesome book, which I'm currently reading right now, called um, Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents, How to Heal from a Distant Reject. Woo! That's a mouthful right there. That is a mouthful right there. How to heal from distant reject. Um, and that's exactly what it is. Um, when you have an emotionally immature parent, they, they you didn't form that con connection bond, like that emotional bond with them. And so it's hard for you to form any other bond with anyone else, or either you go into overactive mode and you, you know, you catch on or you like, when you love, you really love, or when you connect, you really connect, like you're a very intense person. Um, and yeah, that's, that's not normal though. And this whole time I thought it was, but it's not. That book helped me out a lot. It helped me see like how more importantly not just shine the light on me but of course to understand who you are and to have the self-awareness like I said you have to understand from whence you came and so that shining the light on my parent and believe it or not whether we want to admit it or not my parent is the reason why you know I have experienced and gone through so many of these obstacles. And so when I was reading through the book and I was going through, like they even have like an activity book or what, what not, um, I saw exactly how damaged my parent actually was and how their damage affected me. And now, I mean, I'm damaged because they were damaged. It's like the generational curse thing. Yeah, this is, this is it. Um, so I had to forgive. That was number one. But now I'm working on my self-awareness. So I had to understand her. I had to understand my mom. I had to understand my dad as best I could. 
Um, and then I had to forgive, but I had to understand so I can understand why I do what I do. And now I'm in the stage where I'm trying to unlearn or change my perspective, shift my perspective so that I don't continue my behavioral patterns that I have been doing. Um, and I'm going to get into some of this as like dating and picking certain people, like how you keep picking the same guy over and over or how it's the same situation, just a different name and so forth. Yeah, child, like that has a lot to do with, I mean, I hate to say it, but your upbringing, your parents, what you saw, what you've been through as a child, you think not, but you literally do like harbor those emotions and those experiences and you take them with you throughout life and you never actually know until somebody points it out, which is why the psychologist slash therapist was amazing for me. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say um, my next little pearl of wisdom besides getting a psychologist, besides, you know, get reading more, doing the self-help books or trying to learn and understand from whence you came, I would definitely say um, instead, one more thing I did was instead of trying to make myself fit and be shaped into someone else's world, if someone does not agree with me, my spirit, um, my lifestyle, cut them off. I'm sorry, but it's just like when you're dating somebody, when you're looking for somebody, it's like trying on a pair of jeans. If the jeans are too tight, if the jeans are too short, if they're high waters, if the jeans is the wrong color, when you're out shopping, you wouldn't waste more than two seconds after you get in that fit room and you learn that you take them right off and you put them right back from where they came from. It's the same thing when it comes to dating, which we're not talking about that right now, but we will be. That's an episode you want to you want to come on, come tune in on. But anyway, um, and just like with family and friends and being selective, if somebody don't fit, then don't try and make them fit. If you don't fit, don't try and shape yourself to fit. It, it just is what it is. Okay. And I had to learn that because of the sort of attachment style that I have and how I think. And, and how I was behaving, um, I wanted to be accepted because, of course, I was rejected um, by my parents. So being accepted was everything and rejection was like the end of the world. So I would try to make myself fit this mold and these shapes for people that I didn't need to. I didn't need to. I just needed to be myself. But hindsight is always twenty twenty, And now looking back, I'm just like, dang, like I was really struggling. I was really, really struggling. But you don't notice that until somebody pointed out, which is why I keep repeating this. But y'all need to hit up psychology today and find you a therapist or a psychologist because... You don't want to keep living your life like this and wondering, why does this keep happening to me over and over? Why can't I move past this? Why can't I blah, blah, blah? Like, because you're not self-aware, because you you don't know what's going on. I mean, like when you're yourself, it's hard to see from the outside. People from the outside can point and they can say, do you know you do this? Do you know you say this a lot? Do you know your patterns are like X, Y, Z? And you're like, no, I didn't. And that's the whole point is not to point you out and make you feel like it's all your fault, but for you to improve, for you to evolve, for you to continue to get better. Um, see your patterns um, and definitely don't become offended, but try to keep an open mind. And that's another thing. You have to be wanting to change. You have to want the improvement. You can't just come into therapy and and just think that everything is going to be nice and sugar coated. Therapy is a beast. Like there you be leaving therapy be wanting to fight. Like um because sometimes they tell you what you don't want to hear, but that is the whole point of therapy. If everything was something that you wanted to hear, how would you ever improve or evolve? How how would you ever? 
Um, and so they have to tell you about yourself in order for you to understand yourself. And it hurts and it's not a feel good process. So please don't walk into therapy thinking that that's what it's going to be because you are sadly mistaken and you're going to quit, <laughs> especially if you find a good one, you're going to quit and then you'll be butt hurt out here. So don't do that to yourself. Please, please keep an open mind and be ready you know, maybe not like they're not going to throw dodgeballs at you. Like it's not going to come at you full force, but it is going to be eye opening for you to learn about yourself because you think I'm me. Who going to tell me about me? You know, who going to check me poo? And that is not the right attitude to have because <laughs> believe it or not, even though we are ourselves, we do not know ourselves like we think we know ourselves. And therapy is so needed. It's so needed. So um, for those of you guys who've been listening for a while, you already know. But for if, if you're new here, like I do psychiatry and substance abuse, I am a provider. But therapy is the other side. And so if you're not quite ready to talk about medications or anything like that, or it's not to that point, um, it's not like to the point where you need to actually seek medications, but you just want to start off on something light-ish, but I won't say it's necessarily light because like I said, going through therapy is work. Like going through trauma is work. Um, talking about these things that are unpleasant and these things that we have buried subconsciously in our minds and then to bring them all up is unpleasant and you start having nightmares and everything start falling apart, but it always gets worse before it gets better. And if you are willing to come into it with an open mind and you're willing to go through all this stuff so you can get to your promised land, then you got to. It's not for anybody else, but it's for you. It's for your future family. It's for your kids so that you don't continue this generational curse of hurting people, hurt people. Like you, you don't want to do that to your kids. Your kids didn't ask to be here. Um, your husband, of course, don't deserve any backlash uh, from what anybody else did. You need to heal. You need to heal. So I'm going to keep this short. Um, and let me recap. So the first one was forgive and self-awareness. The second one was self-help through books. And the third one was cutting people off and not trying to shape yourself to fit somebody else's idea or for you to fit what you think their idea of you should be. Um, and then I did a bunch of ranting afterwards. But you know, like that's just me. It wouldn't be me if I didn't. But um, let me know what you think about this episode, if you have anything else to add. Also, another book I want to leave you guys with before we close out today would be The Body Keeps the Score. Um, if you are a therapist, you have heard of this book. But if you've been through any type of trauma, P you got PTSD, like it literally scarred you to that extent, which I think to an extent we all kind of do. Um, please, please, please pick up that book and read it. If you, if you're not good at reading, there's audible and there's other, um, audible like, um, companies out there, but I would definitely, definitely say whether you got the Kindle, hardback, paper book, audible, like, please read that book. It will break down so much and understand, and then that way you'll understand yourself a whole lot more. Um, without me having to get into the weeds of everything that's in that book, but it, it is definitely a good read. And again, that other book that I told you guys that I got into is Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents, How to Heal from Distant Reject. That book is good. It's, it's a little book with uh, two parents on each side and two children in the middle, and they're all holding hands. And I think it's brown and teal, the cover of it. Um, that is a really good book. And they made other books about self-care. Um, and they, they actually made a book on each type of parent. Um, so please go and read that book. That book was made by a psychologist. She's a psych D. And so it, it really is good. And she shares stories of her patients. But of course, the name and all the information and stuff has changed within the book. But it brings it home and it resonated with me so much. And like I said, I'm still reading it. So um, if you're interested at all, check out eBay, Amazon and get that book, uh, Barnes and Noble, wherever your local library is. 
because it's definitely one that's not easy to read, but boy, does it open your eyes a lot. But as always, guys, I thank you for tuning in. I hope that the gems that I dropped, my little three gems and all my ranting, was enough for you um, and to help you get through the week. And hopefully you listened to this episode and you thought about somebody you know, um, somebody you care about, somebody who's been through something traumatic and is having a hard time, or somebody who's trying to find themselves. Maybe they didn't necessarily go through nothing traumatic, but hopefully like self-awareness and some of the things that I said about therapy can definitely be of help to them. Please share this episode. Please subscribe. Please leave feedback. Please follow me on Instagram at the resilient PAC. And if you want to follow the podcast page, it is resilience X faith P O D on Instagram. And you can also find us on Facebook and you can also go to the resilient PA.com and all my links and everything should be right there. And I will see you guys on our next episode. Bye, guys.